I'm boys and girls, welcome to my channel, I'm the Obscure Angel PT, and for today what I have here is the Evil Within 2, but it's not a full-fledged benchmark that I want to talk about, about Evil Within 2, I want to talk about why I didn't release yet um, a, a full benchmark about Evil Within 2, and also about um, Shadow of War, well let's start with the more easy answer, Shadow of War I didn't yet release the video because I didn't finish downloading it yet, because the game is huge, is around 90 gigabytes, and my internet connection is really bad, that is why I usually take so long uh, to deliver the videos. And Shadow of War, since it's so big, it's going to take more of a couple of days, so I hope you understand that and wait for me. <laughs> okay, so that's one of the reasons why Shadow of War um, video isn't out yet. Although, it's... I'm already trying Evil Within 2, so I downloaded it faster than Shadow of War because Evil Within 2 is uh, much more, a much more smaller uh, video game. It was around 30 gigabytes, and I'm not going to do a video review, uh, performance review about this game because the performance, guys, that is something really, really weird with the performance of this game. Probably many of you already discovered that there is a problem with the GP usage in this game and I can actually show to you the GP usage on the game it is around 70% as you can see and um, it seems like a CPU bottleneck you know if you if we hide the MSF to burner and actually I'm not sure if I have the frame rate locked or not well I have it in fact I have this the, the frame rate locked and that's something that I want to show you for example if I look to the floor uh, I can get those 30 frames per second. So in the upper right corner there are a lot of numbers with multiple colors. Those numbers are frame times. Frame times usually the, m the less the better, okay? And 33 means that is 30 frames per second. So if I have less than 33 milliseconds on those numbers it means that I will have more than 30 frames per second. So, I enable the target of 30 frames per second, and it seems that the GPU is completely fine with the target. It is giving us a green color, the number it says that is uh, 23. So probably, if it wasn't the lock, I was getting now 40 frames per second while looking to the ground, obviously. But we can see that the CPU in there, it's kind of creeping, creeping up, because it's displaying yellow colors and red, it seems that the CPU is getting a trouble in sustaining the 30 frames per second. So, okay, I'm looking to the floor, so that doesn't matter, so let's just get down off the stairs and get a little bit to a more demanding area, okay, which is just down the road, which is the open world area. Okay, let me just go in here. And here we go. So in this case, the GPU is displaying like 32 milliseconds, 31. So it means that if it wasn't a bottleneck or any limitation, I was getting 32, 33 frames per second in this sequence. So it was playable. It was not perfect, but it was indeed playable. But we are getting 23 in here. Of course, I'm recording, but even without recording, this happens. Um, this way, okay, because of the CPU, which is marked on red and is getting like 40 milliseconds, I'm getting 23 frames per second. So it seems that we are getting a CPU bottleneck, but that doesn't make any sense. So when I enable MS Afterburner, GPU usage is at 75%. So it also implies that I'm having a CPU bottleneck. But when I look to the CPU usage, what I'm getting is like 50%. 60% and I'm recording because if I wasn't recording I was getting something like uh, 40% so there is something wrong with the game because it seems that the game is not using the entire CPU I am afraid that the game is only using two cores but probably it's not really the case but I'm afraid that that might be the case and if that happens there is nothing I can do but I think it's not really that the case because um, a lot of people on YouTube, even with very very well clocked CPUs, are having bottleneck. 
so I'm not really sure what to think yet but one thing I am 100% sure I'm not going to benchmark this game until there is some explanations from the Tango Gameworks or the Bethesda explaining what the hell is going on so the info within one when it was released for the PC it was broken it was having holy shit it was having 30 frames per second lock for me it was fine in my opinion but there was the performance was horrible and with time the performance got a little bit better it was it is still bad today but it was much better than it was on the release so i'm expecting the evil within two um, developers in this case the tango gameworks might actually fix up the game and if that happens i will obviously cover with a new video so if you want to know how the laptop performs let me tell you that it performs so bad Oh shit, this is going this is going to not work, I guess. Oh my god, please, 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 please. Alright. Done. So what about the laptop the performance I saw in these areas were pretty much lower than 80, 80, uh, 18 frames per second. So it's completely unplayable, okay guys? And I made some calculations with the performance metrics. And I'm pretty sure that even with a new patch, the game is not going to run well by any means. So, if you have my laptop that I usually benchmark the GT 740M or anything like it, and you want to, to try out the game, I think you are going to... It's going to be a waste of time because the game don't perform well. Okay, guys? So, guys, I think that's all that I want to talk for now about the Evil Within 2 and the reasons why I didn't benchmark it yet. The reasons why I didn't benchmark Shadow 4. Hope you understand the reasons behind it. By the way, I think I didn't show you the settings that I'm running the game. I'm running the game with 1080p low settings. And one of the most interesting things in this game is that the low set. Oops. The low settings actually. Uh, it is one of the best low settings I've ever seen in my entire life. Because uh, LOD is kind of a downgrade. But Bloom. We get Bloom. We get uh, Object Motion Blur. We get depth of field, we get screen space ambient occlusion, we get screen space reflections, we get volumetric lightning quality, we get shadow quality, we get TAA, all of these with low settings. So these low settings is actually amazing uh, in graphics quality. Uh, you can make it worse than low settings by disable, for example, DOF, screen space ambient occlusion, screen space reflections, volumetric lightning, you can disable all that stuff. But in my opinion, the low settings, it's it looks like an eye setting of any other game. And actually, if I enable the rest, that is barely a difference. And I can I can actually show to you. It might not be good to show you on YouTube, but for example, I'm going to stand in here. This is the low settings, okay? And I'm going to raise it to eye. And there will be barely a difference in graphics. Okay, so high settings. It looks almost the same look at this okay so guys that's all for now that i want to talk about even within two like i said if they patch the game i will do a decent cover like i usually do but for now just forget it shadow 4 will be coming in a couple of days it will take time i'm very sorry and that's it guys so thank you a lot for watching and do hope to see you soon goodbye